The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with an exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. The circus means fun for young folks and old. But under the big top, you see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. <laughs> Mr. Beatty now brings you an exciting adventure which he calls Never Trust a Gilly. During the season, circus people seldom have time to get acquainted with townsfolk. Once, however, the Clyde Beatty Circus played a split week at Mile City. And after the show on the second evening, Jimmy Trotter, one of Clyde's cage boys, strolled uptown and fell into conversation with two pleasant young people who proved to be brother and sister. A little later, growing friendly, they invited Jimmy to their rooms for coffee and sandwiches. But here, after a time, the brother's attitude changed. Ah, oh, Sam, good. stop it. What are you being so mean to Jimmy for? Look, Marge, you stay out of this. Kid, I said it once and I'll say it again. I never saw anybody connected with a circus who wasn't a grafter. Why the cops ever let a circus in town, I don't know. I, I never guess took... I better be going. Uh, thanks for the coffee and everything, Marge, but, I, well, I, I got to be getting back to the lot. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but sometimes Sam gets like this. Sure, sure, that's all right. I, I uh, 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 you're not going any place yet, kid. I'm not through telling you yet. Hey, take your hands off me. <laughs> Says who? I said it. I didn't come up here to get in a fight with anybody. If that's what you want, then I'm going. You're staying right here. Like blazes, I am. I'm just. Why, getting... you. Sam, please. Sam, stop it, please. Get away from me. This is my business. But Sam... You shut up. All right, kid, you're standing there and taking it. I've had a score. I've wanted to settle with you birds for a long time. You're all up. You be of... careful what you're saying. Who's telling me to be careful? I'll show you. Oh, <gasps> Sam. How do you like that? You want more? Give you all the trouble you want, and then some. I'll... You dirty bully, I'll show you. Well, the kid's got spunk. Well, maybe I've got to take some of that out of you, kid, like this. Oh! Come on and take it. That was just a sample. Come on and take it. You hit me. I'll show you. I'll show you. Oh. Oh. Jimmy! No, don't, don't, Jimmy! Oh. Oh. Come on. Get back on your feet, you rat. You started this. You asked for it. Come on, back on your feet. No, Jimmy, don't. I can't just see he's hurt. He can't get up. Hurt? He's hurt? Wait. Sam, can you hear me? Sam! Sam! He's really hurt? He's unconscious. I can't make him answer. I, I guess I'd better go get a doctor. No, you get out of here. What? I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. It wasn't your fault. He started it, but you better get out. If he comes to while you're still here, it'll just mean more trouble. Oh, but, but you're sure there's nothing I can do? No. Just get out. Get out. Please. Just get out and leave him to me. We continue our story in just one moment. Now back to the exciting Clyde Beatty adventure called Never Trust the Gilly. Now the Clyde Beatty Circus has arrived in the Midwest, and Mile City is ten days and a thousand miles behind it. At the present moment, the circus is running through its afternoon performance for the benefit of a county seat town in Illinois. Clyde is just finishing his thrilling performance in the big cage. And a moment later, when he leaves the arena, he finds Jimmy Trotter waiting for him near the performer's exit. Mr. Beatty. Oh, hello, Jimmy. You wanted to see me? Uh, yes, sir, I... I'd like to talk to you if I could, Mr. Beatty. All right, go right ahead. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I'd, I'd like to talk to you in private if I could. Oh, it's like that, is it? All right, come along. Oh, those cats really gave me a time just now. I gotta cool off and get some fresh clothes. We can talk in the trailer. Oh, thanks, Mr. Beatty. So, you decided to tell me about it, huh? What? You got something on your mind, haven't you? Well, yes, sir. And but... you've had it there for quite a long time now. I've been using my eyes. Something's been bothering you ever since we left Miles City. What happened back there, Jimmy? Oh, 
That's just what I wanted to tell you about, Mr. Beatty. Well, I... What's the matter? I, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Beatty, but I, I guess I'll have to tell you about it some other time. I just now noticed somebody. I gotta see. Jimmy. I'll see you a little later, Mr. Beatty. Marge. Hello, Jimmy. But what... What are you doing here? I had to see you. You mean you came all the way from Miles City just to see me? I, I had to, Jimmy. After you left, something awful happened. Well, what happened, March? Sam died. What? That's right, Jimmy. He never came to. He he died about an hour after you left the apartment. I thought you ought to know. But, but what did you say? Didn't anybody ask questions? They asked lots of questions. Who did? First the doctor and, and then the police. What did, what did you tell them? I told them I didn't know how it happened. But I'd found him that way when I came in. Oh. And, and they believed you? I'm not sure. I don't think so. They kept coming back and asking me more questions all the time. Just the same old ones over again. That's one of the reasons I quit my job and came here. Oh, I, I don't know, Marge. I, I kind of wish you'd told them the truth. They couldn't really have done anything to me, could they? I, I, I mean, I, I didn't start it. Just the same. It, it would have been manslaughter, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it would. And Sam was funny some ways, but he had lots of friends back there. If you'd been arrested, I, I guess it would have gone pretty hard with you. Yeah, I guess it would. I, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm all mixed up. You don't have to say anything, Jimmy. Just forget about it. Yeah, I suppose that would be the sensible thing to do. But, but I just don't like it. I guess you have to, Jimmy. If you told the truth now, you'd just get me in trouble. Yeah, that's right. Jimmy. Huh? I hate to, but I've got to ask you a favor. What's that? I need a job. A job? Maybe you could get me one with a circus. Oh, but what could you do with a circus? We told you that night. Sam and I used to have a hall show. We worked up a tumbling routine. I bet if you spoke to Mr. Beatty for me, there'd be lots of things I could do. Well... You will, won't you, Jimmy? Uh, all right, Marge. I'll speak to him right away. Anything more you want me for now, Mr. Beatty? No, you can run along if you want to, Jimmy. Uh, wait a minute. Come back here. Uh, yes? I meant to ask you, how's your new girlfriend like it here with the circus? Girlfriend? She's no girlfriend of mine, Mr. Beatty. Oh, thought she was. Oh, we're friends, but not that way. <laughs> Forget I... it. My mistake. And by the way, you started to tell me something last week, didn't you, Jimmy? Wasn't it about something that happened in Mild City? You still want to tell me about it? Oh, that. That, that was just something kind of silly, Mr. Beatty. I, I forgot all about it. All right, Jimmy. Uh, I can go now? Of course. Well, thanks, Mr. Beatty. Oh, I... Jimmy. Yes? One thing more. When you're ready to tell me the truth, come on back and see me. Jimmy, you're sure Mr. Bay suspects something? Oh, I know he does. Today he practically said so. Then we've got to leave here. What? You mean leave the circus? Of course it's the only thing we can do. You know how Mr. Beatty is. When he wants to find something out, he finds it out. And you like him too well. I bet if he really asked you, you'd tell him just about anything he wanted to know. Oh, but, but he's been swell to me, Marge. I, I sure he's just... been swell to you. But swell enough for the electric chair? What? What if you had to stand trial for killing my brother and they claimed it wasn't an accident? Oh, they couldn't. Yes, they could. You know how they always try to make it look as bad as they can? That's just what they would do. Oh, but leaving the circus... Well, this is all I want to do, Marge. You mean it's all you know... There's other things. And ways of leaving this outfit with money in our pockets. Huh? Get smart, Jimmy. Don't be a dope all your life. I saw this coming and I've got things figured. W w what things? What do you mean? I mean the ticket wagons. What? I'm talking about tomorrow's town, tomorrow night, and the ticket wagons. Jimmy, what would happen if somebody, me for instance, tossed a monkey wrench in the generator tomorrow night? Well, the show would go dark, of course. That's right. The whole lot would go dark. And who's to see what happens at the ticket wagon? I, I don't get it, Marge. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, you do. Don't kid yourself, Jimmy. And don't try to kid me. Jimmy. That's you, Marge? It's me. What the dick are you doing way out here? 
here? Oh, I, I came out here to, uh, to think things over. <laughs> a swell place for it. And a swell time for it. You realize it's just about time for the spec to start? We've got to get moving. Moving? What for? You know what I mean. Look here. You get on down to the ticket wagons. I'm going over by the generator. I'll give you exactly two minutes. Then the lights are going out. What? What's that you got in your hand? <laughs> a monkey wrench. What about it? You, you're serious about this, Marge. You, you really put the generator out of commission? What do you think? Oh, you can't do it. You, you'd never get away with it. Not if you go sniveling around like this, I won't. But you want. You're going to get down to those wagons and do like I told you. But then we're lighting out of here and lighting out fast. But Marge, listen. Oh, I've been thinking it over. I can't do it. Fact is, I never figured I'm doing it. You, you trying to cross me? Oh, no, Marge, no. Oh, Marge, I, I just don't know how to figure things. You've been swell to me, not telling the police about, well, about what I did to your brother and, and everything. But Mr. Beatty's been swell to me, too. He's done a lot more for me than you have. And, and this is crooked. Uh, I can't go through with this, and I won't, Marge. You can tell the cops about me if you want, but I won't go through with it. I won't tell the cops, Jimmy. Not just now, anyhow. Oh, gee, thanks, Marge. I'll handle I... this myself. The show's just started, Harriet. You want to go over now or stay here in the trailer for a bit? No, oh, I think I'll go over, Clyde. Good house tonight? Oh, it's a good house in this town. They're on the straw. Mm, then I will go over. In just a minute. What's that? It sounded like Jimmy. It sounded as if you were in trouble, didn't it? Yeah, come on. He must be out back somewhere. Oh, you stop calling. I don't hear him anywhere. Oh, he must be somewhere around. Jimmy! Where are you? Oh, Jimmy! Wait! What? What is it? What's that? No, no, over there by the trees. Come on. Isn't, isn't it someone lying on the ground? It's just what I want to see. It's Jimmy. Just a minute. He's hurt? Yeah, but I want to see how badly. Jimmy. He's unconscious, Harriet. Look here at this gash on his head. Oh, oh, that's awful. We'll have to get him to a doctor. We... Now what? The lights are out. Everything happens at once. Here, you try to see about Jimmy. I'll go see what's wrong. Probably something happened to the generator. Davis got... That's fine. I heard them. It was no accident that the lights went out. Come on. We continue our story in just a moment. Now, back to Clyde Beatty. <laughs> Clyde deposited Jimmy with the doctor, then hurried on into the big top. Inside, the crowd, alarmed by the failure of the lights, not quite sure whether it had heard shots or not, sat puzzled and half-frightened. Clyde hurried to the stand, silenced the band, and raised his voice in reassurance. Will all of you keep your seats, please? There's nothing to get excited about. The lights will be on again in a minute. Here they are now. The show will continue in just one moment. Okay, Harris, get the band playing. Mr. Beatty! Mr. Beatty! Earl. Earl, have you been outside? What happened out there? There's been a holdup. A holdup? Yes, sir. They cleaned out the ticket wagons right after the lights went out. There hasn't been time for much of a check yet, but they must have got close to $15,000. You said they. Do you know who they are? No, sir. Nobody saw anything. Before anyone knew what was happening, it was all over. Call the police. We've already done that. Good, but what about those shots? Was anybody hurt? No, sir. We figured they was fired just to blast the locks off the wagon. You're sure that nobody was hurt? That's the first thing we checked, Mr. Beatty. Good. We can be thankful for that much anyhow. You have any notion who might have done this? I have an idea. Oh? An idea, but no proof. You keep things rolling in here, Earl. I have to have a talk with Jimmy Trotter. When I've finished, I may have that proof. <laughs> Mr. Beatty. Uh, don't sit up, Jimmy. I have to ask you a few more questions, but I want to make this just as easy on you as I can. It's a pretty nasty gash you've got there on your head. Oh, I, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> I guess it looks worse than it really is. Fine, I'm glad to hear it. Now then, to get back to Miles City and this fellow Sam you told me about, 
You've told me everything about him that you can remember, have you? Yes, sir. He, he hated circuses, so... Oh, you've had a big load on your mind these last few weeks, Jimmy. I wish you'd come to me with it before. <laughs> so do I now, Mr. Beatty. That, that one day I was going to, and then I saw Marge. I mean, the day she showed up. I thought she might have something to do with it. She persuaded you not to say anything, huh? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, besides, well, she lied to help me. I was afraid if I said anything, it would get her in trouble. So, now you're in worse trouble. I think you'll find the truth is best at all times. Did you ever let Marge think you'd help her in this hold-up, Jimmy? Oh, no, sir, I didn't. What I mean is I, I didn't have to. She just sort of took it for granted. Oh? Well, she thought she had so much on me, I'd, I'd have to. Mm, must have surprised her when she learned you wouldn't. Exactly what happened tonight, Jimmy? Well, there, there isn't much to tell, Mr. Beatty. She was going to do something to wreck the generator. She came to me and, and told me to get down to the ticket wagons. I told her I wouldn't have anything to do with it, and I started to walk away. Is that when she hit you? Yes, sir. I guess if she'd been a man, I would have been looking out for something like that. But her? Well, I never expected it. Then what happened? Well, the first time, she missed my head and hit my shoulder. That's when I yelled for you. I guess you heard me. Yeah, we ran out of the trailer, but when we found you, you were <laughs> unconscious. <laughs> the second time, she took better aim. I should say she did. Do you know if there was anybody else in on this? No, there couldn't have been, Mr. Beatty. If, if there had been, she'd have told me about it. Like I said, she never figured I wouldn't help her. Uh, never trust a gilly, Jimmy. Huh? <laughs> it's just a saying among circus folks. A gilly's anybody outside the circus. <laughs> I'll remember that. Well, I don't know just what we're going to do about your problem. That affair with Sam, I mean. But I promise I'll help you all I can. Now, I think I'd better let you get a little rest. Good night, Jimmy. Tomorrow, I'll... Mr. Beatty. Yeah? I, uh... Oh, well, never mind, Mr. Beatty. I guess it's something I can tell you later. Sure, you get a good sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Mr. Beatty? Oh, good morning. You're, uh... Inspector Barker, police department. Oh, yes, I met you last night, but so many things were happening all at once, I didn't remember. I'd like to question the Trotter boy. Oh, yes, we're particularly interested in getting a good description of the girl in this case. Well, her name's Marjorie Elliott. Right. Uh, I can see the boy now, can I? Well, I haven't been in to see him yet this morning. My wife went over. I imagine he's well enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, here she is now. Hello, Harriet. Good morning. Uh, you've met Inspector Barker, haven't you? Oh, yes, of course. Good morning, Inspector. How are you? Fine, thank you. Your husband's told me you've been to see the boy. How is he? I don't know. What? I'm afraid I have an unpleasant surprise for you, Inspector. You too, Clyde. Jimmy isn't here. Why, isn't... Why, that can't be oh. true, Harriet. He has to be here. Did you look around the lot for him? All over the lot. No one's seen him at all, which means he must have left early. Most likely before dawn. Well, this is too bad. That kid is up to something. But what? He started to tell me something last night, and then he stopped. Yeah, that's it. He was planning to leave even then. But why? That's what I'd like to know. If he's just running away, I'll be very disappointed. But, Inspector... Yes? I think I can give you the description you want. Of this girl, Marjorie Elliott? No, not of her, but a man. Get your pencil out, Inspector. I'll tell you what I know. Hello, Marge. <gasps> oh, no, you don't. I'm coming in here. You. Where did you come from? I've been riding the rods all the way to get here, Marge. I want that money. But I... And I want it now. Pretty mad about the way you hit me that night, Marge. You might have killed me. I guess you didn't care whether you did or not. So if you don't get that money and give it to me quick, maybe I won't care what I do. But, but how did you know this is where I'd be? That was easy, Marge. I just figured you'd go where you were sure I wouldn't. After, after what happened to Sam here that night, I knew you'd figure I'd never come back here again. But I fooled you, didn't I, Marge? I did come back. And I still want that money. I could kill you. You're almost dead. The money, Marge. Oh, no, you don't. You give me that money or the only place you'll go is down to see the cops. You wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? Why not? I'd tell them about Sam. I've already told Mr. Beatty. So what difference does it make? Told Mr. I'm not here to fool around, Marge. If you tell me where that money is, or the cops get it out of you. Well, which is it going to be? It's in that closet. It's in a little leather handbag. Good. You stand right there and don't try any funny business or you'll be mighty sorry you did. This the closet? It's in the back. Under that black coat. 
Uh, this it? That's it. All right, kid, drop that. Sam! Get your hands up. Sam! Sam, you're alive. I thought... Marge, you told me... Oh. Sam, watch out! He's throwing the bag! Oh. Oh. He's unconscious! You knocked him out! For the second time. And you told me I'd kill him. Lucky for you, you didn't, young man. What? Huh? Oh, who are you? Inspector Barker. I followed Sam out here. You're Jimmy Trotter, aren't you? Yes, sir, but... Well, you'd better get your things together, Jimmy. Mr. Beatty wants you back at the circus. Well, that's the whole story right up to the time Inspector Barker got there, Mr. Beatty. And it's quite a story. But uh, have you checked the money? It, it, was it all there? Yes, Jimmy. Except for the little they'd spent, all of it. You have nothing to worry about on that score. Well, then I'd like to know something. Oh, what's that? Well, how did Inspector Barker know how to find me? I was clear out at Miles City. <laughs> you told him. What? Me? Sure. When you described Sam to me that night, you were hurt. Afterwards, I got to thinking about everything that had happened, and I got to wondering if you really had killed Sam. It began to remind me too much of a stunt that confidence men pull occasionally. You mean making me think I'd killed Sam? Huh? Yeah. Then, of course, Marge had you in her power, or thought she had. I guess you gave her quite a surprise on that score. <laughs> but even so, that doesn't explain how... Inspe how Inspector Barker found you? Oh, yes, sir. Well, I got to thinking that if Sam was alive, he must have helped Marge on that holdup. For well, we knew, of course, that she must have had help even if you didn't think so. Yeah, I got to thinking about that afterwards. How could she be over at the generator and at the ticket wagons at the same time? Right. But she couldn't tell you Sam was in on it with her because if you knew he was alive, she'd no longer have a hold on you. So, I set the inspector after Sam. Huh? Of course. He was supposed to be dead, so no one would be looking for him, and he wouldn't have to make any particular effort to hide after the holdup. Inspector Barker, he picked him up. Right. And followed him to Mild City. But, uh, Jimmy. Yes, Mr. Beatty? Barker tells me you knocked Sam out with that bag of money when you knew Sam was holding a gun. How'd you get the nerve to do that? <laughs> well, at first, I didn't have the nerve, Mr. Beatty. No? And then well, I thought of the way you face those cats every day. And I thought, who's Sam that I should be scared of him? So I threw the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, I'm proud of you. You're going to make a wild animal trainer yet. Clyde will return with a word about our next exciting story. But now, a message of interest to all of us. Once more, here is the star of our show, Clyde Beatty, with a few words about his next thrilling adventure. <laughs> Harriet's and my favorite sport is deep-sea fishing. And going to various West Indian islands on several occasions to fish, we heard talk of zombies, said to be the walking dead. We even met American and European travelers who claimed they'd seen them. But our own experience with a zombie occurred on a visit to the island of St. Lucia in the British West Indies, where we were hunting the deadly snake called the Fur de Lance for exhibit with our wild animal show. How we met the zombie and the happenings of the strange and dangerous hours that followed is the story I want to tell you next week. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. Never Trust a Gilly was written by Gibson Scott Fox. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.